the 2016 race for the Republican Party's presidential nomination is one of the closest in history and could inspire the first contested convention of the 21st century. Welcome to Watch Mojo News, the weekly series where we break down news stories that might be on your radar. In this installment, we're counting down five facts you should know about the contested Republican nomination process. Number five, what is the Republican National Convention? The Republican National Convention is held whenever there's an upcoming U.S. presidential election in order to nominate an official Republican candidate to run for the White House and to establish the party platform, rules, and values for the forthcoming campaign. The Democrats stage a similar event for their party, usually around the same time as the Republicans. In 2016, the RNC will take place at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, Ohio, the home of the Cleveland Cavaliers, from July 18th to the 21st. While on some occasions the outcome of the convention is almost a foregone conclusion due to the strength of support for one candidate in particular, 2016's is set to be one of the most hotly contested and potentially controversial conventions ever. Number 4. Who are the major Republican candidates for nomination? As of late March 2016, there were three major Republican candidates heading to the 2016 convention after a series of high-profile dropouts, including Jeb Bush, Ben Carson, and Marco Rubio. Canadian-born Ted Cruz edged the Iowa caucuses and was an early favorite to secure the candidacy, while Ohio Governor John Kasich kept his seemingly slim hopes of nomination alive with a primary win in his home state of Ohio. However, the campaign of business mogul Donald Trump has generated the most media coverage and debate. I am officially running for President of the United States. Trump's brash policies. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Unconventional manner and disdain for political correctness have earned him international headlines and significant support. I don't frankly have time for total political correctness. His views have divided voters and, to some extent, the Republican Party itself. If we Republicans choose Donald Trump as our nominee, the prospects for a safe and prosperous future are greatly diminished. Number three. What happens if Donald Trump does not get enough delegates? We're way ahead of everybody. I don't think you can say that we don't get it automatically. I think it would be, I think you'd have riots. For all of Trump's growing support, however, he must acquire over 50% of delegates at the RNC. That's 1,237 of 2,472 to run as the Republican candidate. However, many Republican leaders have made a concerted effort to derail his nomination. What was proposed yesterday is not what this party stands for, and more importantly, it's not what this country stands for. This anti-Trump campaign would ultimately offer an independent nominee in the general election, one with more traditional Republican-held values in the hopes of blocking Trump. This is no longer about trying to beat Trump. It's just simply to deny Trump a majority of the delegates before the convention, right? However, by late March 2016, Trump had already assumed a commanding lead, amassing 678 delegates to Cruz's 423. But that's still just a little over halfway to an outright win. If a candidate fails to secure a majority of delegates, which is an increasing possibility in 2016, the Republicans will head to what's known as a brokered or contested convention. This is the situation where, after all delegates, including the 112 that are unbound by voting primaries and caucuses, partake in a first ballot and are unable to find a winner. Then a second round of balloting ensues. For the 2016 convention specifically, due to the RNC's Rule 40, only candidates with signatures of support from the delegate majority of eight or more states are even eligible to get the nomination. Though it can be argued that this technically wasn't a real brokered situation, the last so-called contested convention happened in 1976, when Gerald Ford defeated Ronald Reagan in the first round of voting. Number two, what happens if the convention is brokered? If the first ballot doesn't result in any one candidate receiving a delegate majority, then a brokered convention ensues. Anytime you hear someone talking about a brokered convention, 
It is the Washington establishment in a fevered frenzy. At this point, the whole process becomes even less predictable, as all delegates are no longer necessarily tied to their original candidate and are free to vote for whomever they want. Your guy is definitely going to lose. Why don't you join the winning team? As every delegate can be persuaded to change his or her vote, it means that a previous leader may end up an eventual loser. We have losers. We have losers. The rounds of voting continue until a delegate majority is gained, even if that means multiple ballots. When it comes to the Democrats, the last brokered convention took place in 1952, when no one won the nomination after the first floor ballot. Meanwhile, the most recent Republican convention that could officially be considered brokered was held in 1948 and was settled after three ballots. In 1880, it took the RNC 35 ballots to determine a winner, which was eventual president James A. Garfield. Number one, who will win the Republican nomination? So if the Republicans do try somehow to steal the nomination from Trump, the question becomes, who do they hand it to? The fact that a brokered convention is a real possibility is indicative of how close the 2016 Republican nomination race is. Donald Trump and Ted Cruz have emerged as the strongest candidates throughout the primaries. But if neither secures the magic 1,237 majority, then their initial dominance could have little effect. In the next few months, we could very well see one of our two major political parties ripped apart by internal divisions. John Kasich may enter back into the running in Cleveland, as could other figures that had previously dropped out or even declined to run in the first place. All of a sudden, he's saying publicly what has been rumored, I, I guess, for a while, that he's seriously thinking of running for president of the United States. A brokered convention could result in a voting free-for-all and an outcome that's difficult to predict. There's no question that there would be a lot of turmoil uh, if the establishment tries to thwart the will of the people. If it does come down to multiple votes, however, the Republicans will hope for a rare spot in history. The last American president produced by a brokered convention was Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1932. Did these facts get you thinking? To vote for which news story is covered next, head over to watchmojo.com suggest. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more newsworthy top tens published every week.